We continue our discussion on uh, differential equations in week 7 with uh, introducing second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. Uh, we will then move on to uh, homogeneous versus inhomogeneous equations, the type of solutions for this type of differential equation, equation and the characteristic equation, which will be the, um, the gateway to finding our solutions. But first, let's look at um, second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. Now, this is the form of a second order differential equation uh, where we see that the highest derivative is 2. It is linear because the derivatives and the function themselves are present in, to the power of 1 and not multiplied by each other. And the coefficients for the, um, for the function and its derivatives are constant. g of x is some kind of function uh, that we won't specify now. Uh, there's another way of writing this, uh, a slightly more shorthand version. And you'll see me do this uh, more often simply because it's shorter to write. But this is the same differential equation where we've written the derivative in, uh, as, as a prime. Now, so these are the differential equations we're interested in. This gx can be either equal to zero. So if it's uh, zero, we call the differential equation homogeneous. And if it is not equal to zero, we call it inhomogeneous. And today we will only be looking at homogeneous equations, which are of the form y, a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals zero. Now, um, now let's see what kind of solutions um, we we have for this type of equation. Now there might be a separate video for first order linear differential equations uh, explaining how we get there. But if we don't have that. Um, we know that the solutions have the form y of x is some constant e to the power of lambda x, and lambda can be some constant value. So solutions have these forms. So if we know that the solutions have these forms, the only thing we really need to know is how to determine these lambda values. And because it is a second order differential equation, there will be two solutions uh, which will be independent. So we have y1 um, and we can, well, the, the, actually, let's start with this. The solutions will have this form. So there will be one solution e to the power of lambda 1x, another solution e to the power of lambda 2x, and they have to be independent. So that means that one can't just be a multiple of the other. So the, uh, that usually means that these lambda values are either different or something else happens, which we'll get to when we start solving these. So these uh, must be two independent solutions. If we have one solution and we have another solution, then the general solution of this will be some constant times the first one plus another constant times the second one uh, so that we have uh, the ability to have two initial conditions um, to uh, solve for C1 and C2. But let's go back. Uh, this is something we'll come back to later, but let's start with this. The solution has the form e to the power of lambda x. Let's see what happens if we plug that into the equation. Well, if yx is e to the power of lambda x, then the derivative of that will be equal to lambda e to the power of lambda x, and the second derivative will be equal to lambda squared e to the power of lambda x. Let's put this into our differential equation. We end up with a 
times the second derivative, lambda squared e to the power of lambda x plus b, lambda e to the power of lambda x plus c e to the power of lambda x equals zero. So what have I done? I have put this in here. I've put this in here. And there's a blue here somewhere. And this went there. And uh, in our case, gx is equal to zero. So we get this equation. Well, we can factor out uh, the term e to the power of lambda x, and we get a lambda squared plus b lambda plus c equals zero. Now we have two terms here, e to the power of lambda x and this second order equation, this quadratic equation. If one term times another term is equal to zero, then either e to the power of lambda x must be zero, or e lambda squared plus b lambda plus c must equal zero. But we know that e to the power of lambda x is always positive. So this can never be equal to zero. So we know that a lambda squared plus b lambda plus c is equal to zero. And this is a quadratic equation we can solve. This quadratic equation that has exactly the same coefficients uh, sorry, exactly the same coefficients as our differential equation, these a, b, and c, is called the um, auxiliary equation or the characteristic equation. And if you have this type of second order linear differential equation, you only have to take these coefficients and you have this quadratic equation. So how does this relate to solving um, differential equations? Well, um, let's have an example. Y, square, uh, y double prime minus y prime minus 6y is equal to 0. We can immediately write out the characteristic equation. So this is the differential equation we need, want to solve. So we're looking for a solution y of x is something. But we take the step first by writing out the characteristic equation. So the coefficient for y double prime is 1. So we get lambda squared minus lambda minus 6 is equal to 0. Now we can factor out this, um, this quadratic equation by writing um, y, oh, sorry, lambda minus 3 times lambda minus 2, sorry, plus 2 is equal to 0. So the solutions are lambda is equal to 3 or lambda is equal to minus 2. Now if we have these two values for lambda, we know that we have two solutions. Uh, y1 of x is e to the power of 3x and I have another solution. y2 is equal e to the power of minus 2x. And the general solution will be a linear combination of these two. So the general solution is y of x is equal to some constant e to the power of 3x plus some other constant e to the power of minus 2x. And I use c1, c2, but the book will frequently use a e to the power of 3x plus b e to the power of minus 2x. And this is our general solution. The step from taking your... Uh, so the steps are, have the, uh, the second order linear differential equation which uh, with constant coefficients, which is homogeneous. Write out the characteristic equation, solve for the two values of lambda, and write out in this form. Now this is the case when lambda, uh, the, these two lambdas are real and different from each other. Um, 
That is not always the case, as we have seen um, when we uh, went into differential equations, uh, sorry, second order equations. There are two, well, there's three possible solutions that can happen. And let's discuss these three. If we have lambda, a lambda squared plus b lambda plus c is equal to zero, so this is the auxiliary equation, three possible things can happen. The first one is lambda 1 is unequal to lambda 2 and they are real, so we have no complex numbers, so that is this situation. Then we know that the solution y of x is c1 e to the power of lambda 1x plus c2 e to the power of lambda 2x. This is the, 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 the example we had here. We had lambda 1 is, un, uh, uh, is uh, not equal to lambda 2 and we get this form. The second one is that we can have that lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2. Of course, again, just a real number. Then we see that if we were to write y of x is c1 e to the power of lambda 1x plus c2 e to the power of lambda 1x, that this wouldn't be, that these two are not independent. I can express one as a constant times the other. So these solutions, uh, we, this is essentially only writing down one solution, but we can solve this and this is solved um, the, the, the technique for finding this, which is not part of this course, is um, called, um, what's it called again? Variation of constants, the, the method of variation of constants. So if you feel that you want to look that up, you can. Instead of having this form, here we get an x. And it's to ensure that we have two independent solutions. That is the case if we have this where lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2. We get these two solutions. Well, what if we get lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, the, the complex conjugate, and their complex numbers? So lambda 1 will be equal to alpha plus uh, beta times j, and alpha 2 is equal to, uh, uh, sorry, lambda 2 is equal to alpha minus beta times j. So we get complex numbers as the solutions to our characteristic equation. Then the solution becomes y of x is e to the power of alpha x times c1 sine of beta x plus c2 cosine of beta x. Now the derivative of this will be in a separate video. Uh, it's quite a lengthy deriv uh, derivation, but the only thing we need to know for solving uh, this type of equation is do we get two different values for lambda, do we get the same value for lambda, or are they complex uh, conjugates, so do we get two complex uh, solutions, and if we know which we have, uh, which one we have, we can immediately write out uh, the uh, the solution without any extra calculation and um, note that this is the case if we have d is b squared minus 4ac so this was uh, this is called the discriminant this is the case for d is positive this is the case for d is equal to zero and this is the case for d um, uh, negative so I'll show another example So we already had an example for the first case. Now let's say we have y double prime um, plus 2y prime plus y is equal to 0. And if we now look at the... Uh, so this is our second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients and it's homogeneous. The next step is immediately writing out the auxiliary equation is lambda squared plus 2 lambda 
plus 1 is equal to 0, which we can factor out as lambda plus 1 times lambda plus 1 is equal to 0, so we get lambda is equal to minus 1 because there's only one solution. Could we do this with a discriminant? Sure we can. D is uh, b squared, 4 minus 4 times 1 times 1 minus 4 equals 0. So we're in this second case, which we already saw because we had two of the same solutions. Then we write out y of x is c1 e to the power of minus x plus c2x, and don't forget this x, e to the power of minus x and we are done well the final example is uh, y double prime uh, plus 2 y prime plus 5 uh, equals 0 sorry y, 5y and we immediately from this go to, to the character of the auxiliary equation lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 5 is equal to 0. I can't factor this out uh, in my head, so I look at the discriminant. d is b squared minus 4ac, so that is equal to 20. So 4 minus 20 is minus 16. And we see that we have a negative discriminant. Well, the solutions lambda 1 and lambda 2 is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root or d d divided by 2a and in our case that is minus 2 plus or minus the square root of minus 16 divided by 2 the square root of minus 16 is the square root of 16 times the square root of minus 1 is 4 times j so this equals minus 2 plus or minus 4 times j over 2. So we get the first um, solution to the auxiliary equation, which is equal to minus 1 plus 2j. And we have lambda 2 is equal to minus 1 minus 2j. And we see again that these are each other's complex conjugates, which means that the sign of the imaginary part switches. Uh, if we have this, we see that our alpha is equal to minus 1 and our beta is equal to, to 2 and our general solution y of x is e to the power of minus x. Let's do this a bit nicer. e to the power of minus x times c1 sine of 2x plus c2 cosine of 2 x and we have found our general solutions. So for second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients, um, those are of the form y double prime or a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y is equal to j of x. If j of x is equal to zero, we have the homogeneous we have a homogeneous equation the way we solve this is to write out the auxiliary equation where we use the coefficients of our differential equation solve this and get um, into one of these three categories where if they are real and not equal to each other we have this solution if they are equal to each other which was this example we have c1 e to the power of lambda x plus c2 x uh, e to the power of uh, lambda 1 x. So this is what we get extra. And if they are complex solutions, we can write out this. You, there's no need to write out any other derivation. I'll post it in an extra video later, but this is what we get. And we have the solution to all these um, differential equations, second order differential equations with this method.